Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you're from. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Friday Morning at the Fun House with Martin Popoff. Good morning, Martin. Bright morning, and sunny Pete. by you How today. Are you? And I think, yes, we have to talk about the weather, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cold and windy up here in Toronto the, today. So Yeah, it's cold here. We had rain all day yesterday, and yeah. uh, but the sun is kind of out, but it's only like maybe in the upper 30s, which is cold compared to how it has been. So, um, yeah. but hey, whatever. Warmer days are ahead. That's all that matters. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, here we are, everybody, for part two. We've been doing a good job of late of doing these two-part only really cool uh, theme shows, and today is part two of one that went over really well last week. So it's legendary albums, really notable albums that kind of have crappy album cover art or terrible album cover art, but the music is great and the album is great, but the cover art's kind of like, eh, not that great. So we've each picked out 10 more. Uh, I have an honorable mention as well, because I just couldn't, I could, couldn't whittle it down to 10 and I didn't want to get rid I of won it. two then. So yeah, let's, awesome. let's, there just, we go. So let's that just out each fine. do we, one. Yeah. We didn't plan that. So awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to have Martin kick us off with his first choice of the day. Okay. So my, my first choice, uh, I made a last minute switch. I was going to go with uh, Van Halen, Fair Warning and tell you all about William Kerlack and this artwork. But let's, uh, let's put that one aside because at the same time I pulled this one out and I, I decided, you know what? I think this is a better choice. So women and children first. Um, so I get it. I mean, this is a famous photographer did this. Norman Seif did this. Back cover photo is kind of better. Um, and then we've got Helmut Newton who did the, uh, so, so they've got two famous photographers. So Helmut Newton is the, is the famous guy who did the famed poster that came with this, right? The big, the big uh, David Lee Roth chained to a, chained to a fence. Boy, are we ever going to get that pulled it back up? That was a lot bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> I knew that was trouble as soon as you started opening it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Six panels. I, I forgot it was that big. But no, this, this album cover, um, I remember when this came out and I thought, you know, it doesn't really line up with the title, Women and Children First. There's a great ad that you can see for this album cover um, that came out in the UK weeklies where there is a woman and a child floating in the water with a flotation device, which would have made probably a more appropriate album cover, maybe even better. But the idea of having just this small photo as a sort of inset. And I always thought the minute I saw this, I, I didn't like the look of Eddie on this. He, he looks... He looks like he's he's sick on his deathbed sort of thing. He's very white and pale. He looks like he has sideburns as well. And it just doesn't look very much like him. So it just kind of goes to show that, you know, you could get a famous photographer or whatever, but I don't think this is a particularly crazy, notable, amazing photo anyways. Uh, and then the colors and all that. I mean, I get it. They're kind of, um, they're, they're kind of Van Halen always pushed themselves as kind of a, uh, a regal band that's above, you know, the album cover. Yeah, they have a lot of strong, simple images for their album cover. It's debatable whether they are actually strong, you know, Van Halen too and whatnot. But no, I just thought, you know, looks like small photos. So we, and then we got to fill it in with this green, you know, what does green have to do with hard rock? What does any of this have to do with the title? And I wanted to make sure it was a notable album because this one often wins the polls as favorite Van Halen album, as does Van Halen one, as does this one with another very uncommunicative, dark, moody album cover for a party band, right? right, right. A party band. That's not a party band, really, album cover. It's a party band picture, but there you go. Van Halen. They're trying to look cool, right? But it's like, does it really work? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And I agree. I think the cover, the, the photo on the back works better Yeah, on there. Speaking of a photo that doesn't really work for how the album is, musically speaking, or the fact that this is truly the international debut of this guy's new band mr ah, universe yes. by gillen okay <laughs> yeah. i never understood this album cover so it's almost like this should have been an album cover for one of the ian gillen band albums which you know ian dressed nice in his uh, white sports jacket you know with the yeah. the ocean behind them you know kind of breezy like you know like the ian gillen band albums are kind of like you know jazz rock right a little little more yeah. uh sophisticated than what the gillen band was which was this big heavy brash you know english hard rock band and you got this, you know, the English gentleman look on the front cover standing at the beach or whatever. And it just yeah. doesn't work. I was like, where is, where are the rest of the guys? This is supposed to be the arrival of the, the Gillen band, right? And yeah, you know true. who they yeah. are. And this yeah. just signals a continuation of the 
quite frankly, pretty bland album covers of the Ian Gillen band. And we would go to see some, yeah. some somewhat a little more interesting covers from this band. Although quite frankly, I don't know if Gillen ever really had any outstanding album covers, but I just, I mean, this is a great album. It's a heavy album. It's, I mean, yeah. it's all sorts of things, but not the image that's being portrayed here. Yeah. True. Yeah. And I never really thought of that. It's, it's, this is the band, but here we have just Ian and it's, are, are we supposed to think he's Mr. Universe number, number two, right? So it's not, it's not like the grand funk with the muscles and stuff. Right. Uh, so, uh, and I never liked that logo. I know, I know it's his signature. I mean, that's how he signs his name, but I, I was never crazy about that logo either. So, yeah. Yeah. I've been on the fence. I mean, it's, it is unique looking, um, how successful that is. I don't know. You know, you can, it could be unique looking like angels logo yeah. and that's an all time great logo. This is unique looking and like, eh, it's Gillen. It's, yeah. it's not overly exciting. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So my next choice, um, is the damned machine gun etiquette. Um, you know, any, any day to talk about the damned is a good day in my books. Um, but uh, this is a really good choice for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, it consistently wins the polls as the greatest damned album and consistently as one of the great punk albums of all time. It's ferociously heavy and chaotic. Like it's a really, you know, well-regarded damned album. And also the damned has some pretty cool album covers. And this is really bottom of the barrel for the damned album covers. It's it's kind of like a washed out, slightly out of focus picture of when the damned first arrived at New York City and they they put on their crazy clothes and walked around the streets and got, you know, got ribbed for the way they looked or whatever. But um, you know, there's a lot of photos from this session that you can see, but it, it's just uh it's just What's it got to do with machine gun etiquette? It's just them walking on the streets of New York City. It's almost like they're they're more happy just to commemorate the fact that, hey, we made it to New York City. They were one of the first bands. I think they were the first English band to uh, to tour the States at all. First English punk band. Uh, first, first punk band to have an album out um, with the Damn Damn Damned album, which is that iconic album cover with you know the pile over their faces or whatever but yeah it's just a, it's it's absolutely a washed out photo weird colors this this blue up here this down here the back cover is no better at all it's just a chaotic um you know it's it's a little better i mean it would have made even a better album cover but uh yeah pick pick for those reasons because a they have a lot of good album covers and b it's considered an iconic punk album it's really hard on the eyes I mean, yeah, the it is. colors don't work. You <laughs> yeah. got the, the white logo and then the yeah. red uh, album yeah. title. And then you look at the band photo. It's like you like you like struggling to look at like, is that is that the cars? Is that Blondie without like Debbie Harry? Like, who, who are those people? Right. And they're so dressed so differently from each other that, yeah. that they look they always look like a ragtag bunch because they all have sort of their characters. One of my favorite bands of all time. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's just a weird picture, too. Yeah. Speaking of weird pictures. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Falls to the wall by accept. Um, I still remember the day that I saw this in the record stores. And this is after, you know, we all fell head, head over heels for um, Restless and Wild. And then I saw this and I'm like, what in the world is that? Um, yeah, still to this day, I don't really know what the point of doing this was. Yeah, um, it's just a ugly, ugly album cover for a truly terrific heavy metal album. Uh, yeah. which many people call their best album ever, right? Um, you know, it signals and signifies a lot of things for a lot of people, which I won't even go into. Uh, but ultimately for me, it's just, uh, I just thought it was a very strange choice for an album cover design. And uh, didn't, didn't stop the world from loving this album, of course. But, um, yeah. you know, you got to wonder if the band looking back on it, there's second guessing doing that. Yeah. Yeah, so so that album, I'll, I'll go into it and explain a little. So, so... <laughs> Yeah, I, I did an accept book. It's long out of print. You can get, still get the ebook of it. But so there was the big gay controversy around it because it's balls to the wall, right? I mean, that album cover is kind of artistic looking and kind of cool that way. And if it was just the hand holding the ball somehow, that would have made probably a pretty cool album cover. Yeah, I but agree. you had a song on it called London Leather Boys. You had Deefy, who is Gabby. You know, so it's a woman writing the lyrics. So they didn't kind of change up. They weren't very careful with changing up the lyrics to say she instead of he here and there. So you had that. And then you had the picture of them all with their shirts off. Right. 
Yeah. In, inside there's a there's a big band photo of them you know and all all with their shirts off so all of this added up to a lot of press for the band there you go uh are these guys uh you know are are these guys gay is this a big gay band and all this and they had to sort of talk about it in in the press because they were all perplexed about it because on the lyric front you know this is a band like scorpions english absolutely their second language at that point they're they're not big on english and so gabby's writing these lyrics and they're not really working out you know and so you're hearing you're hearing and he instead of she or she instead of he here and there and it all added puzzling. up uh, to yeah. that right yeah it's puzzling but a great album nonetheless yeah absolutely okay uh so my next one um i was gonna switch this out but let's let's stay with um i'm going with roger waters amused to death i was gonna switch it out for radio chaos um and then, you know, is this the life we really want, which is probably my most played album of the last five years. This is an absolute masterpiece to me, but I didn't want to pick it as a legendary album because it, it kind of came and went and it wasn't really all that well received. I love this album to death. I'm amused to death by this more than I am by amused to death, but um, amused to death as an album cover, I think doesn't work because again, you've got the inset photo where you think, okay, they couldn't size it for CDs or whatever. I don't, I don't particularly like, um, you know, the same font for the, for the name of the band and the name of the album and the name of the band, Roger Waters is smaller than the name of the album. To yeah. me, this looks like a 45 sleeve. Um, or a CD single sleeve. And it's just got a picture of a monkey looking at, uh, uh, you know, an eye on a TV. Yeah. Uh, and I, I wanted to pick it because it is a classic album. So this is a legendary album. I think it's the best Roger Waters album in terms of how much super heavy, complicated work goes into it. But, you know, it's, it's, a little, it's a little shame on Roger for these album covers not being great because Pink Floyd's great history of great album covers, right? Yeah, yeah. There's there's a kind of like a cheapness factor with that album cover. That yeah, it just, it just screams we put this together pretty quickly. Yeah, and the album obviously was not put together pretty quickly. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's another one. <clears throat> Never understood this album cover. The Jeff Beck Group. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> a big green apple in a tiny room. Yeah, I don't get it. And quite frankly, I almost picked the the debut album too which, you know, maybe is a little more artsy than this. But, you know, this is a band that the record label and the press were touting as that, you know, that next huge group. You got Jeff Beck coming from the Yardbirds, right? You got this young, brash Scottish singer, uh, Rod Stewart. You got, you know, all these other great musicians in this band. This was supposed to be the next big thing. You know, this band should have been right up there with Led Zeppelin at the time, but they were a completely faceless band. And the albums didn't do it any any justice. You had no band pictures on in the albums. You had nothing here. Uh, just just the whole thing. You know, even the the original LP, just nondescript. And you know, if you if you're not really paying attention to that, okay, and you see this in the record stores back in 19 God, what year was this? 69, 70, whatever year this was. Um, are you going to pick, are you going to buy this? Are you going to pull that up from amidst all the other cool stuff that's coming yeah. out at the time? Probably not. I mean, this, this is like uh, as nondescript and boring as it gets. And it's a great album. And then, you know, the band breaks up not long after this and the rest is history, but uh, just quite a shame. I mean, the, the, I think, you know, you look at like those first couple of Led Zeppelin albums. I mean, there's a lot of thought that went behind those. Right. And then you got these, these two, Jeff Beck albums, the Jeff Beck group, right? Which a band that should have been massive. I know people look back on them very fondly, but just did not, the record label did not do any favors to them whatsoever here. You know, plus the album is like what, 20, 28 minutes long or whatever, but, but uh, that's a story for another day. So. Yeah, he's got some not good ones, right? There and Back and Truth are not good. Wired is pretty cool. It's a good yeah, one. Yeah, Wired is cool. Blow by Blow is cool. Yeah, and then the, the second Jeff Beck group album covers are not great either, you know, with Cozy Powell and those guys. It's, they're just kind of like, I don't know, not please. You know, there's a lot of artsiness that went into album cover creation back in this time period. Yeah. And it's really weird when you see a very notable album that kind of didn't go that route. It's like, what well, what was the problem here? Why, why didn't they put the extra thought behind putting together the packaging when so many other bands were just, it was all about that. I just, I've never understood that. Yeah. That might be a Rene Magritte, Magritte painting, or it's at least inspired by him. And Styx did that too, right? They used a Rene Magritte. Someone else did as well. I can't, I can't remember who it was, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's that look. 
but uh, yeah, just do doesn't mean anything, right? No, uh, nothing at all. Okay, so so my next choice, um, and I brought four of these out because wow, not great album covers. I went with here. I'll take it out of the sleeve here. I went with uh, Caius Blues for the Red Sun. Um, I do not like this album cover. Uh, it it does look kind of indie. I've never liked album covers where. Um, they, they run the, the name of the band and the, uh, you know, the name of the album around the corners and repeat it a bunch of times to, to make a frame out of it. I never, never liked that kind of idea. I had to pick this one because this is truly considered a legendary album of, uh, of Stoner Rock, right? It's one of the cornerstones of Stoner Rock. But Wretch is not good. Uh, Welcome to Sky Valley. It's pretty enough, but it's not that great. And the circus leaves town is not good. It uses that old font that came out, you know, that one of the early computer fonts, right? Um, so, so yeah, bo boost for the red sun. I mean, I, I just feel there's a little bit. You, you look at Wretch, and and you do feel that and that have a little bit of the uh, the grunge aesthetic, I suppose, as well. This is post grunge, but uh, what a great album this is too. I mean, it's just such a groundbreaking stoner rock sludge heavy not not so much sludge not so much uh doom either but uh, yeah stoner rock i guess is the yeah. best way yeah. to uh, to describe it but uh yeah they they did not have the best album covers there we go caius oh yeah none of those are are very good unfortunately all right how about a little uh, bad company run with the pack <laughs> yeah you know i get that you're titling it run with the pack and for most people, pack connotation has to do with dogs or wolves, right? And uh, so kudos for them at least putting, you know, a drawing of wolves on the front. But did they have to, you know, I think would have made, worked out a lot better here is let's have a pack. Wolves have to look, you know, regal and majestic. And there's nothing wrong Trust me, it's beautiful that you've got, you know, a mother with her, you know, with the babies and the proud papa behind, right? And I get that. But it, it, did that really, you know, fit on a hard rock record? You know, you're going to run with the pack. Let's have a bunch of wolves in a pack running in a nice, you know, forest scene or something like that. To me, would have made a lot more sense. And, you know, you got this drab gray color, uh, you know, the crappy logo. I don't know. To me, this is just a, a, not a pleasing album cover at all, despite the fact how much I love animals and wolves and all that kind of stuff. I just think that this could have been so much better with a little more thought process. And maybe there, there was an idea for why we have the kind of, you know, the birthing, you know, the post-birthing scene here with the wolves. I don't know. I don't know what it has to do with anything, to be honest, but puzzling beyond belief to me. That's true. I never realized that they scrapped the logo there and they kind of never returned to it, did they? I mean, the, the other ones, I don't think they used that logo. I mean, they probably they did later on and, you know, live albums and whatnot. But, uh, you know, I don't think Rough Diamonds has it and Desolation. Where's my Desolation? Yeah, Desolation uh, Angels doesn't have it either. Right. And, you know, to your point before, I mean, look at how small the, the this new logo is mm -hmm. and how, yeah. how much real estate you got here. All right. Yeah. And, and then you got to put all these lines in here. Like, yeah. what, I mean, come on, it's like, give it some more thought. And this is a very good album, right? You know, and it's yeah. a shame. I this think it was one. properly silver in the original vinyl though, right? Like queen, the game, queen, the game, you had gray ones and you had silver ones. Right. Yeah. And we talked about last time, grand funk, we're an American band was properly gold. Right. So, you know, that's a more expensive printing process than four color process where you're just trying to make up a color when you actually use, you know, a metallic ink, it's, it's a little more of a big deal, but yeah, yeah, yeah. totally agree. All right. Um, so my next one, um, is living color vivid. <laughs> there we go. Total, total mess. Um, so this is a somewhat legendary album cover. It did, it did rather well out in the marketplace. Cult of Personality is a huge song. Open Letter to a Landlord is the second biggest song on it. Um, it's gold or platinum or something like that. Um, but Never liked their logo. I think Vivid is a weird name for an album. And then it's just kind of like a dog's breakfast or whatever they say in the UK of uh, almost like when you open up a paint program in a computer for the first time and you just make a bunch of squiggly lines to see, you know, to try out different things. And then you hit save. 
And that's yeah. that's literally what that looks like. It's it's an absolute mess. Yeah. Um, uh, does, doesn't help the band at all, you know, nor does their frankly pretty crazy, heavy, inaccessible, noisy, chaotic sound that they come up with. It's very jammy and noisy. Vern, Vernon Reed as a, as a guitarist is, is quite, um, is, is quite nutty sounding. Uh, and, you know, and then they follow it up with Time's Up and it's not really any better. And then they have this one, um, you know, and by this point, everybody's uh, given up on them. It's 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 almost really because partly because of the album covers, but really because it's they're a pretty inaccessible sounding band. Yeah, they um, really they are. Yeah. Later stuff that was pretty good. But this one at least came in a, a red jewel case, which was, uh, you know, one one little uh, thing that they did for it. But uh, yeah, Vivid, just uh, just a brutal, brutal album cover. There yeah. You know. It's almost like someone took like a couple cans of paint and a couple paintbrushes and dipped a brush in each can, held yeah. it in both hands and just like splattered it all over. Yeah. yeah it's messy. All right. All right. So this next one, uh, arguable whether it's actually legendary. It actually, this was one of the albums from this band that uh, did pretty well, but it led up to what many consider their legendary couple of albums. But uh, I, I just think this fits the format because it's a terrific album and it uh, it's just one of the most, the weirdest album covers you'll ever see. Uh, Climax Blues Band, Blues Band, Tightly Knit. Yeah. All right, so this was the, the first album where they actually went with the full Climax Blues Band name. Uh, and this is the album that really got them noticed here in, in North America. And of course, uh, a couple albums before they were, you know, really big uh, albums and big hits and all that kind of stuff. So, but you know, you've just got this, uh, you know, tightly knit, you've got this weird looking bald guy with, I don't know, is it a swollen tongue? Is it a sock? I don't, I'm not really sure what is going on coming out of that mouth. Uh, he looks fairly perplexed. Is he tightly knit? Uh, he could be. I don't know. Uh, I, I honestly don't know what the title has to really has to do with the picture at all. Yeah. But it's a fantastic, you know, British blues rock album from a band that would get really big pretty quick. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. If anybody, if anybody has any uh, facts about why they did this album cover, I would love to hear it because uh, I mean, I really dig this album a lot, but I'm just like, like, what is that all about? Is this like a comedy album or something, right? Is, is it like some comedian we don't know about? And I don't know. I, I guess his mouth is shoved tightly with something that's knit, right? It's like it's like pantyhose or a sock or whatever. Yeah, it looks like a sock, but then it's black and it's white. So I, you know, I'm I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure. And it stresses you out, puts you in a bad mood. You know, it it's like it's like it's it's got it's got nervousness to it right and well he looks worried i should be worried too i yeah. guess i don't know but yeah. but you know the album is not the album is a really cool fun listening album i, I don't know I that's don't know. another one that looks like a gold earring album cover to me right it reminds me that's a good that. point it very well could be yeah yeah and, and you know it kind of looks like it, he looks like the actor i forget his name from he does a lot of horror movies he was in the original hills have eyes and I'm, it's not yeah, him yeah, but it yeah. looks like it could be him so you know what else that looks like it looks a little bit like uh ufo no heavy pet in that album cover right yeah, true, true. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so my next choice, I'm going with uh, Def Leppard High and Dry. Um, I never liked this because the, um, you know, the, the photograph is is one of those uh, made to look old photographs. It's a little bit like your Led Zeppelin presence photographs, which makes sense because this is a hypnosis album cover. I don't think uh, I wanted to pick it because obviously it's a legendary album. It's most people's pick for favorite Def, Def Leppard album, but um it's also I wanted to pick it because it's uh, it's one of the bad hypnosis album covers. It would be in the lowest quartile, quartile I imagine, of hypnosis album covers. You've got this dude all around the side, like what is he all about? And then on the back, uh, let's see, on the front is he like that? Uh, yeah, so it's the different hairstyles and stuff. And on the back, same kind of thing. And then you've got the guys doing their uh, "except we're all naked" uh, picture again, right? Um, but yeah, just uh, not a very good, not a very good, uh, there's no link really between, you know, the, the, the border and the picture. It's all kind of ugly. The colors aren't great. Never liked this logo. Never liked that Def Leppard logo or the <laughs> band name. Um, the, al the album title name is pretty cool, but uh, yeah, just, just not a great one. I almost switched this out for Pyromania, which I don't like very, very much either. Yeah, I don't like good. their, they're relying on primary colors uh, as you move forward. I just really do not like their album covers. Yeah, that's a good choice. Yeah, that's kind of a puzzling one. Uh, as is this one, 
rock on by humble pie <laughs> yeah wow you know rock on but i mean that should signify something and then you look at the back which has these great live photos of the band they look like absolute stupid superstars and then you've got these you know these policemen on motorcycles seemingly in like a pyramid they're all kind of like ah here we are i just i don't know the, the, with a title like rock on you you know you want something kind of heavy that signifies something that's completely rocking. I don't get that vibe from this at all. And this is a classic album from them, arguably their best. And I just, uh, I don't understand it at all. You know, rock on, they should have just put all the live shots on, on the front, you know? So who knows? Yeah. It's a, it's almost like a, a, a cool acrobatic act is a cool acrobatic act, but does it make a great photo? And then after that, does it make a great photo for an album cover? Right. So yeah. All right. Um, my next choice is Rolling Stones, Let It Bleed. Um, I, I seem to recall we talked about this in a previous show, maybe when we did Rolling Stone album covers, um, but I think it was you that talked about it. So I'll, I'll yeah. just say a few words this time. But this reminds me of, uh, you know, every time you walk past a restaurant window and they've got pictures of their food in the, in the window and it never looks good. It never looks like it. <laughs> because also the sun usually fades out all the reds in it and it always looks totally washed out anyways. It looks yep. like it's gone bad. Um, and so here's here's food on an album cover again and it just, just doesn't look good. Looks even worse on the back because it's cut mm -hmm. into and all that. So, you know, and what's it got to do with Let It Bleed and you got this this pale pasty white background um and you've got this uh this uh you know annoying balancing of something heavy on top of something light um you know that the title text is almost bootleggy looking uh yeah just everything about it just uh is is an annoying thing that uh you think ah just just like a like a big big mess what do we got here a cake on a tire on a pancake on a clock face on a on a reel, uh, a stones let it bleed reel, on a spindle. That's what those were called in the old days, right? <laughs> uh, and then and then on top of a copy of the record and a really old style tone arm over here. So yeah, there you go. Rolling Stones let it bleed. And just think, you could put like a burger and a bun on top of that, and you could, you could definitely see that in like an old fifties like diner or hamburger joint, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then break your teeth on it, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then take that Rolling Stones reel and auction it on eBay. Yes, make some money on that, right? Don't eat that. <laughs> All right, Rush Signals. I never liked this album cover. I know this is a great album. I don't deny that at all. I know this is your, I think your favorite Rush album, but I, I never understood what the, you know, the Dalmatian and the fire hydrant really have to do with anything relating to signals. Uh, and this band has had some really cool album covers preceding it. And then this comes out and I'm kind of like, what you know this doesn't look good on a t-shirt I, I have the uh i have the tour program which is this 10 times bigger and i'm like uh it's just so ugly um and granted i love dogs i love dogs to death i mean i own three of them and but i'm just like do we want to see them on a rush album the dog's not even looking at the camera sniffing the hydrant that maybe he just peed on i don't know whatever it just it just doesn't make any sense to me so and then you know you got the the new logo here which uh yeah I'm not necessarily crazy about, but uh, I don't know. I just was never a fan of this album cover. Yeah, it's a new logo they didn't keep. Um, and the colors, it's almost like Rush is, is trying to be snooty and prove that they're even more upscale and less heavy metal. It's like we're moving away from heavy metal in every way. So here's some really nice, pleasing, light uh, pastel colors for you. Yeah. You know, the signals is, is really to do more with, uh, you know, the dog sniffing and the dog thinking fire hydrant got to pee on it. Right. So it just has to do with that or whatever. So Hugh Syme sometimes, right. I mean, there's a lot of these little clever, clever things that go along with it, but, uh, but yeah, it's as an album cover, it just, uh, it's, it's subdivisions, right. It's, uh, it's basically that uh, it's it, the, uh, the album covers the suburbs where the previous one is the city, right. It's the yeah. middle, middle of Toronto for the other one. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. Um, my next choice is, Soundgarden with Louder Than Love, um, you know, and I also brought out Bad Motor Finger um, because this is a band that that does not have good album covers. And again, um, you know, the aesthetic here is uh, a little bit of chaos, right? With, uh, you know, we don't see the guy's face in the picture and uh, and it's like, oh, look how heavy and violent we are live. It's the classic Charles Peterson look. 
uh, for a lot of these. At, le at least it's not one of his where there's the, all that blurring going on as well at the same time, right? And so this this happens over a lot of uh, album covers and uh, iconic, you know, sub pop shots. Um, but um, you know, it happens too much. So it almost feels like they're, they're looking too much like a set. I don't like that. Uh, again, it's, uh, it's, we had to put Soundgarden down the side like that. And, and it doesn't even have the album title on it. And the album title, I think is a, not a good album title louder than love. So yeah, this is a band that's just kind of trying to look punk rock and chaotic and, and, uh, and I don't think it does them really any favors. We only got one guy in the cover. So yeah, just just a good uh, you know a good or bad history of not great album covers from them. Yeah, I remember when that album came out, I was like, God, they can't even show like Cornell there. I mean, you know, he's a pretty you know good looking guy, right? Yeah, right. And it's like, and then here just his hair all over the place. It's like, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna imagine if I did that, right? People yeah. would be like, oh, that's the worst album cover ever. Well, it's... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so in saying that, so in there, they don't show his face and he's just kind of like, you know, hair all over the place, just kind of like whatever. And then you've got Making Magic by Pat Travers. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I no, almost I wasn't going to pick this because this is arguably not a legendary album. It's a very good album by him, uh, not legendary. I, I almost picked Crash and Burn because it's just like such a drab blob of red. But then I, I was looking at this and I'm like, is this really the image that they wanted to portray for this budding Canadian guitar hero, right? He never dressed like this, ever. Yeah. So why yeah. put him in this ridiculous outfit oh, yeah, on that's the cover? Point. Look at that thing, yeah. It's just awful. And he's like, ah, oh, you know, it's almost like, you know, Jesus Christ, superstar. Yeah. And it's like, and then, you know, on the back, you know, there he's got his guitar. But again, that's awful too. And I just, I just don't get this album cover at all. I mean, if I was Pat, I would have been embarrassed to do this. And this is a really good album. I mean, here you got, you know, half the album, the songs featured on the live album, which is the album that really broke him uh, here in North America. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, this is just messy and puzzling and I just don't get it. Almost looks like a country album, right? It, it could be, or, or like a, you know, like a Saturday Night Fever. Like, is that John Travolta? I mean, is this like a disco album? It could yeah. be, right? I don't know. Is that his hair? Is that big, mut is that big, like, sideburn mutton chops? Like, what is that? Is uh, that it looks to me like sideburn mutton chops. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he's, he's looking very Southern rock or country on that. It's it's actually quite a Southern rock album in, in a lot of ways. I used way, to. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I'll tell you a funny thing about that record. Compare that album, uh, to to uh, some of the classic Foghat albums, and listen to Dave Peverett's voice and Pat's voice, and they sound really close. And it's is you could literally almost picture a, a few songs off that album being on a Foghat album. You wouldn't even notice the difference. It's yeah, it's the music is very similar, and I, I agree with your Southern rock kind of comparison because there are a lot of kind of Southern rock isms on a lot of the early repertoire, both Foghat and Pat Travers, absolutely, yeah. and Ted Nugent for that matter. Yep, for yeah. sure. Yep. Okay, uh, maybe there's a show in there somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so my next choice is Status Quo Quo. Uh, I wanted to pick this one because uh, I a lot of people do consider it their favorite Quo album, and I certainly consider it my favorite Quo album. It's quite heavy. Um, it's got one of the most magic rock and roll moments of all time on uh, on the song Backwater after they do this long break section with a solo and they break into that first verse again. It's one of the magic 20 seconds in all of rock and roll history. Go listen to it. Um, and also just take me when that comes in. That's, that's literally one of the top 20 as well. When that, when you kick into the verse of that for the first time, and that's the first two songs on the album, but very heavy album. Um, a lot of, uh, uh, so, so I, I pulled this one out as well. Status quo. Hello, which is your, your basically your black album look, right? Um, and I don't think that's very good either, but I picked this because it is my favorite. It is a classic and it's just weird, this status quo tree with their heads. Uh, and I really always hated the idea that the name of the band is status quo. The album is quo. Later on, they have an album called status quo. So it's not even like their debut, right? It's like, two years after this or whatever. So it's, it's pretty ridiculous, but uh, yeah, don't like the colors, the Brown and the green. And uh, I don't know what it, what the, what, you know, the title refers to the tree or whatever beats me, but uh, yeah, classic album, super heavy album. I still play it all the time. Like qu quite a, quite a heavy quote album, not a great album cover. There you go. 
So ironically, that is, well, that's also my favorite status quo album. And, but ironically, that's my favorite cover art for them. Cause I don't, yeah, like they don't have a lot of good ones. No, they yeah. really don't. This, this sort of like this Roger Dean ish look to that album cover that I yeah. think I like, but, but you're right. The colors are a little weird. It's got these kind of like orangey browns and all that kind of stuff, but yeah. Uh, Pile driver is a pretty good, good cover, but that's not bad. Yeah. That's forward. Not... No, there's not very many good ones at all. Right. No, no. You know, status quo, status quo was called blue for you in the UK. So that got a, different album cover with them all in blue jeans and ours had ours had the die cut out for it status quo right and it had some silver foil and whatnot but uh yeah not not very many can't stand the heat just supposing yeah there's the one with the bombs that's pretty cool later on right that's not bad. yeah yeah so i got so many albums so many albums all right all american boy by rick derringer <laughs> Yeah, funny. I don't know. It, it's it's almost like they're going for you know. I would have loved to have seen a, if they're going to have a a picture of Rich or Rick, I should say, uh, with his guitar. You know, put a cool like concert photo or something. I mean, this is like I know it's titled All American Boy, and he kind of looks like this teenage idol here. But is that really what they were trying to go with for this guy? I don't know. And this is a good hard rock album. And this is, this is a big seller for him. And I just, I never liked the, uh, the painting. And I, I just, he, it's like, is he Leif Garrett? Is he Peter Frampton? You know, like who is, who is he trying to be here? Um, I don't know. I just never liked this at all. Yeah. And the other, the other wild thing about that, I mean, that's gotta be a photo or not a painting. Imagine, eh? I, I'm uh, pretty sure it's a photo. It might be. Yeah. You know what? It might be a photo that's just been kind of like touched up with okay. whatever kind of, uh... but you know that the funny thing about that is sometimes you get photos of guys that don't look anything like the person that does not look at all like Rick Derringer. Right. I mean, I mean, literally that, that I wouldn't even have thought that was Rick Derringer if I would have just saw that picture. Right. Obviously, they're trying to make him out to be one of the new glam stars as well, right? But that's a UK thing, the, the whole glam thing. But uh, I know. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, cool. All right, last choice. Uh, last choice for me is Twisted Sister, Stay Hungry. So there you go. It's a little obscure because it's framed up with a bunch of stuff, but you you get the picture. You get everything you need to see. Which is, uh, you know, this weird blue background and, and obviously kind of a cheesy set made up for D. Um, he's got he's got a big chunk of uh, meat, uh, a big bone that's made to look, you know, fairly not too gross, but uh, still it's pretty gross. But, uh, you know, the one that the other thing I don't like about this whole thing, number one, um, they're trying to push D as the guy above the rest of the band. But um, I never liked I never liked this makeup. And I never liked these clothes that these guys put on. Um, you know, I, I get it. They're trying to do that. Whatever happened to baby Jane, you know, crazy old woman look, uh, you know, it's not exactly they're, they're, they're kind of looking, trying to look like uh, not transvestites, like good looking transvestites, like New York dolls. They're trying to look kind of, kind of nasty and big and brutish. Right. That's the idea. But I never think it, I never really thought it worked. So, so it always reminds me of these and the clothes look kind of too planned. Like they're obviously costumes that are made properly by somebody. Right. Um, so yeah, did ne never like this album cover. Don't mind the logo, and I like that it's a little smaller like this, and they, they did incorporate it with the, with the bones and stuff on it. But uh, but yeah, just not not a good album cover. Just too too kind of trying to be shocking, but then at the same time, the whole thing looks kind of corporate. Yeah, I mean, we already had Kiss, right? So it's like, what? Uh, just be yourself, you know? Yeah, I, I always thought the 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 makeup and the costumes were a little outlandish for them, but uh, but whatever. All right, Doobie Brothers, minute by minute. Uh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, half the, and this was a huge album for them, but you couldn't have a more engaging photograph on the front of your album that obviously, you know, you put a lot of work into, you know, you got Ted Templeman producing this. Um, you know, half the guys are looking off camera, looking dis, I mean, look at Michael McDonald, looking completely disinterested here. Uh, Pat Simmons, at least, is, um, you know, smiling, right? And you got, you know, Skunk Baxter is hiding half of his face. I don't know. It's just, to me, this is just a really lazy, boring album cover for an album that went, you know, it's their biggest seller ever. Yeah. 
Looks like the only way it relates to the title is that they're bored and they're looking at their watches and wanting to get out of this. Photo. Yeah, I minute. Mean, when is when is this photo uh, op done? Right. This uh, I, I, I'm got to go out and yeah. have some have something to eat or go to the bar or do whatever. Yeah, Anything yeah. but sit here and take more pictures. Right. Funny, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Crazy. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so as we promised, mention. we had one uh, honorable mention each, right? So let me let me carefully go under my big David Lee Roth poster that I, I won't be putting up on my wall anytime soon. Um, and let's uh, let's let's do a little honorable mention here with uh, a, a little three pack here. The, this I was going to include this, but then I thought, you know, it's a little bit of an obscure band, even though it is absolutely classic in metal circles. Um, I'm going to go with torch torch just probably the greatest new wave of swedish heavy metal band of all time overdrive's pretty cool too the first europe is pretty cool but this album is just a slamming classic start to finish gorgeously recorded um played with such intensity dan dark on vocals absolute metal masterpiece and it's just got one of these kind of cheesy illustrations it is a gatefold mind you and then over to the back it looks pretty cool that would almost made a better album cover so there, there's your there's your gatefold of the whole thing let's see get that in the picture and then inside you've got these crazy live shots which the band looks awesome in right Amazing, amazing band. But, you know, I included them because the debut EP is not much better. And then they came up with the Notorious for their second and last album, although they've reunited and made an amazing new album, Dan Dark anyways, Electric Kiss. Um, with, there's Dan Dark getting an Electric Kiss from this model, you know, sitting in an electric chair. Strange album title, right? Another, another one of the great, band shots of all time like what a cool looking band eh oh yeah yeah <laughs> great looking band this is a really cool album too it's a little more commercial and accessible a little slower uh than the first one but it's still loaded with personality but yeah anybody anybody who loves their their frost core new wave of swedish heavy metal check out torch i don't think there's a better album from that whole scene of all time really cool in 1984 i think it is right 85, yeah so yeah, really cool. Wow, those are some ugly album covers. Holy yeah. moly! Yeah, and, and it's a shame because the the one you showed, the, the one you highlighted, uh, that back cover is gorgeous. Yeah, it's like take yeah, the back. They got the ugly face, and the, that whole thing is great. Yeah, wow. Yeah, this this thing is just a masterpiece. Ten songs on it, all, every one of them just slamming. Really, really good quality traditional metal. Dan Dark is one of the great frontman vocalists of all time. Like we just played that thing to death in the eighties. Yeah, wow, yeah. very cool. That's a good choice. All right, so my um, my honorable mention, and I should have grabbed the ones that came after it. And, and I'm gonna forgive this band because this is their debut, so it's kind of understandable that they, uh, you know, maybe just didn't put a lot of thought into the album cover here, or the label didn't put a lot of thought into it. But uh, the debut from Little Feet. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, I mean, that's just kind of like, yeah, you know, what is this like a Pat Metheny album cover or, you know, what is this here? Right. It doesn't look very uh, jam bandy or Southern rockish, right. It's just kind of like, here we go. And you yeah. look at like all their album covers after this were really wild and really well thought out, you know, with the little duck person and the, uh, the, the, the lady with the big lips and all, you know, all that kind of really cool stuff. And this is just like pfft, there. And, yeah. uh, a very fine album, a very fine debut that started a jump started a very nice career for this band. But uh, yeah, I if I saw this in a record shop, I wouldn't even give this the time of day, unfortunately. Yeah. Real but, Eagles uh, vibe from it, right? Yeah, like that first Eagles album, right? Or the second one. Yeah, it's just yeah, just kind of nondescript. Nothing screams anything from this album cover. Um, cool. Good one. All right. So there you have it, everybody. Um, some additional crappy album covers from some mostly legendary albums at least we think they're legendary right so <laughs> so if you think there's any that we absolutely missed put them in the comments below we'll be checking those out uh we appreciate everybody watching martin you want to uh you already got uh, coming in coming into the bookshop these days well soon there will be the uri heap visual biography but right now it's still uh the driven book the rush driven book the flaming telepaths book and i'm selling prints out of it of the illustrations i've done and that's kind of going pretty good um, and the sweet book and the angel book all at uh, martinpopoff.com. Cool. What's the uh, street day for the Uriah Heap looking at? 
Well, it's it's printed now, uh, but um, but you know who who knows? Uh, it, t- it takes a lot of work and a lot of nightmares getting these things over from the UK. So I would say I would say give it about a month, and I'll oh, okay. I'll have them in stock. Yeah, you got some time. Okay, cool. Sounds good. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Coming up on the channel, we've got uh, this weekend, Rich Catino and I will be ranking the albums of New Wave of British heavy metal legends, Tigers of Pantang. Uh, we've got Lynn Versace on the show also this weekend. We're going to be giving our top 10 songs of Meatloaf. And, uh, and then make sure you tune in Monday night. Hudson Valley Squares. We've got Mr. Popoff joining us once again on the Hudson Valley Squares. Mike Antonelli will also be on board with the whole crew, the entire crew of the Hudson Valley Squares, where we're going to be uh, each talking about the best sounding album we've ever heard in our lives. So that album that is just absolutely sonic bliss that when we play it, we get the kind of warm and fuzzies and the gigglies and all that kind of stuff that production wise, sonic wise, just an amazing album to listen to headphones or whatnot. So we're each going to be uh, discussing our ultimate favorite sounding, best sounding album ever. So that's coming up on uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, we've got another edition of in the prog seat where we're going to be doing an all Alan Holdsworth show, picking our favorite five Alan Holdsworth solo albums, as well as our favorite five appearances from Alan Holdsworth and other projects and bands. So stay tuned for that. And a lot more coming up next week. For Martin Popoff, I am Pete Pardo. Have a good weekend, everybody.